What's going on guys, Eric Pate here, back with another video, and welcome to a, another episode of, actually, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna name it what I previously was gonna name this series, was Let's Talk Racing with Eric Pate. Hold on, I started the video off wrong, hold on, hold on, hold on. Boogity, 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 let's go racing boys, my name is Eric Pate, and let's go ahead and talk about some racing here today. So, I'm going to discuss with you about how I did with Circus of the Americas last week. And then I'm going to tell you guys who won both stages and who ended up winning the race. I am not going to go through, like, I, we're not going to go through, we're not going to do what I previously did where I went through and I, and we talked about how everybody finished. Like we did back in 2020. Anyway, um, so my picks... For last week was Ty Gibbs, AJ Allmendinger, Ross Chastain, Chase Elliott, Kyle Larson, Shane Van Gisbergen, and Daniel Suarez. The dark horse was to Ty was Ty Gibbs. How we're gonna do this every week is we're gonna do. I said we're gonna do five picks. We're gonna do six picks every week. Uh, six uh, main picks, and then we're gonna have one dark horse, the guy I think that's gonna surprise people. And then I'm gonna say top ten in points. So yeah. Um, let's go ahead and let's review how we did with Circus of the Americas. It was a pretty, what it sounded like on, on PRN, it sounded like it was a pretty, pretty slow race. We only had two cautions the whole race, and it was the two guaranteed cautions. But there was a lot of action. Going around the tracks, cars are spinning, Chase, um, Christopher Bell and Kyle Busch got into it at one point, which led to a Post-race conversation between the two. Luckily, no, this went flying. Um, so yeah. Um, our stage one winner was actually Christopher Bell. Our stage two winner was Denny Hamlin. Fuck you. <laughs> I hate Denny Hamlin, by the way, so that's why I said that. So yeah. Um, and William Byron ended up leading 42 laps of the 68 we ran the other t I don't think he led a single lap in stage 2 somebody can correct me if I'm wrong in the comments but this race felt like it took for freaking ever just to get one lap done I, I wish on like the NASCAR apps and whatnot it would show me instead of showing me like how far behind somebody is behind the leader I wish it can also tell me Hey, what are their lap times? Like how fa like how long is it taking them to complete a lap? Each driver to complete a lap. Um, now, with my picks on on if I did so so with the picks uh, where I'm gonna tell them I'm gonna tell you guys where they finished on my picks, and it's gonna be in order on the finishing. Now, unfortunately. Now, luckily, we are starting with our dark horse, dark horse first because he finished the highest. And I wasn't surprised he finished the highest, actually. I was skeptical to pick him as a dark horse. I was going to replace him with... Honestly, I should have replaced him with Daniel Suarez. But I should have done that. I should have done that in the first place. Anyway, Ty Gibbs, he ends up finishing third. AJ Allmendinger in finishing... 6th, Ross Chastain finished 7th, Chase Elliott finished 16th, Kyle Larson finished 17th, Elliott Larson, Ch Champion Gisbergen 20th, him too, and Daniel Suarez 31st, him as well. They all originally finished one position lower. Chase originally finished 17th, Larson finished 18th, Champion Gisbergen 21st, and Daniel Suarez finished 32nd because there was a post-race failure on the 15th place guy of Justin Haley height the height was not met properly on the Justin Haley machine so he did end up failing post-race inspection if you fail post-race inspection in a NASCAR race you lose everything and the only thing you get is one point so that goes with the winner as well. So if somebody wins and then, like if Denny Hamlin 
was to win in Richmond. And we'll say Joey Logano finishes second. Dan but they found something wrong with Hamlin's car that did not meet NASCAR's NASCAR's qualification for this car. Hamlin will get disqualified and Joey Logano will be declared the winner. That's just an example. Regardless if Logano led a single lap, Logano will still be declared the winner. And if Hamlin also got stage points, he will have to forfeit the stage points. So far in the Cup Series, ever since we started this whole thing in 2019, it has happened only once so far and happened during the 2022 M&M's Fan Appreciation 400 when Kyle Busch and Danny Hamlin finished 22. Danny Hamlin was the winner. Kyle Busch was second. And they had, I think, a piece of tape under the car that was giving them a little bit of a aerodynamic advantage to where both drivers did end up failing inspection for. That was also happens to be the the first start of our first pick for Richmond this week. All right. Um, do we want to discuss the top 10 in points right now? Or should we just go ahead and go into our picks? You know what? It should be more for the review part of the video when we are reviewing with the last race. So, after after Coda, before Richmond, here are the top 10 in points. Honestly, I should do the top 16 because that's how many guys can make the playoffs. That's going to be closer to, that's going to be more of a, um, when we start the NBC stretch, what I call the NBC USA stretch of the season. I can be more of a that part of the season than where we are now. <coughs> Martin Truex is our points leader. Ty Gibbs is second. Ryan Blaney is third. The first driver on the list that does have a win this year is, I'm surprised, is number four. Danny Hamlin. I'm not surprised Danny Hamlin's number four. I'm surprised that it took us to number four before we found a winner. Kyle Larson, number five. William Byron should be higher. Um, with two wins already this year. He's at number six with the win in the 500. And with the win at Circuits of the America. Christopher Bell, seventh. Our Phoenix winner. Ross Chastain. Chase Elliott and Tyler Reddick at number... Ross Chastain at eight. Chase Elliott at number nine. Tyler Reddick at number ten. Now let's let's do a quick review on Richmond. We have a 400 laps, 300 mile race we are doing this weekend at the Richmond Raceway. We're doing it at six o'clock on Sunday night. We yes, we are racing on Easter. I honestly do not mind us having an Easter race for the longest time. We did not race on Easter, and then they decided to bring it back for some reason, for some unknown reason. I was told it was since the 80s, probably the last time we raced on Easter. But in 2022, they brought it back. I'm personally not against it, but I think I think us not racing on a holiday, major holiday like Easter, that's probably a good idea. But then again, I also kind of understand. I mean, for the longest time, every year, we raced on the 4th of July, regardless what day of the week it was on. If it was on Monday, we raced on Monday. If it was on Tuesday, we raced on Tuesday. If it was on Thursday, we raced on Thursday. Regardless what day of the week the 4th of July was on, for the longest time, that's how we did the 4th of July race, was whatever day of the week it fell on. Anyway, let's go ahead and go through my picks. Alright, I'm going to start off my dark horse. I'm probably going to get some hate for this. I picked Chase Elliott. Now, Chase Elliott was not in this race last year. Chase Elliott, this was like his... It was either the race right before he got back from injury, or the race... Or it was like two or three... Or it was like two races before he got back from injury. But Chase Elliott had to be out for six weeks due to injury. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and get into the Chase Elliott controversy from last year. People were pissed that he got a waiver because it was not a racing accident. Yet, and I'm like, I don't care. I mean, he went to go have fun on his on his free time. He went to go have fun. Yes, he was snowboarding. It's, I, get, I get the injury was not a racing injury because it wasn't. 
he was snowboarding with some friends in Colorado. And NASCAR acknowledged the fact, and Kyle Petty came out and said, there are guys out there who are racing every fucking day in other racing, in like little dirt tracks throughout the country. This is just like that. And people are saying, people are disagreeing with Kyle Petty. I agreed with Kyle Petty. If, if people, guys like Kyle Larson, Kyle Busch, um, uh, Christopher Bell, Chase Briscoe, a good majority of these drivers are racing on dirt tracks throughout the country throughout the week. If they get injured in one of those, NASCAR's going to grant them a waiver as well. A injury waiver as well. Now, I would say though they probably shouldn't have granted him a waiver after what happened after him setting out for worldwide technology because he was on suspension. Otherwise, not. That's my opinion. I do think though, Chase Elliott could be quiet all day, and then all of a sudden at the end, boom, right there. There has been races where Chase Elliott has done that, where he's been quiet all day, then boom, right there at the end, he's there. I think he did that like once or twice in 2022. Quiet all day, and then all of a sudden, boom, right there and wins. Now, time at the time with the main six picks I have picked <laughs> for Richmond. First off, give me the guy that has been so on fire with short tracks this year. Every time we have been to a track that races like a short track or a short track this year even though we only we only been to two short tracks so far two tracks that we can really qualify as a short track phoenix phoenix races a lot like one and bristol is one and ty gibbs was right there in both of them he if he saved his tires a little bit more in bristol he probably would have won actually Martin Truex, the last short track race we had, second place. And then every, tr and then it seems like at um, Loudon, which is a track that races a lot like short track, he was there as well. He won. He dominated Loudon. Uh, and I think Martin Martin's gonna make some noise at Richmond. Joey Logano. He's kind of makes some noise as well at Richmond. I feel like Richmond at Fort when Ford's gonna get their first win of the year, and I feel like it's gonna come at Richmond, and it's gonna probably be at the hands of Joey Logano. And this is a really big surprise to some people because some people I'm probably gonna get some comments in the comic section. Eric, I thought you hate Joey Logano. I do. Well, I did. I did. Um. I did hate Joey Logano for a little bit. There was a little bit of time. Every time Joey Logano win, I'm the same way I'm like with Hamlin now. Yo, are you kidding me? Go yourself. Like, if you want a good example of that, of being hating, hating on Joey Logano, watch the, I'm going to put the link of it. Watch, but I keep my live streams up on my channel, except for a cup, except for a few, because one, either processing took too long, or two, I just didn't want to embarrass myself on my channel. Uh, number four. Give me RFK's Roush Fenway's Kozlowski driver by Kozlowski. He probably could have won this race. In the, in the fall. He, last fall, he had a shot at winning this race. But, unfortunately, his teammate ended up being the winner. Speaking of which... I'm just gonna, I'm gonna skip number five just for a second, and go to go, go to pick number six, which is his teammate Chris Buescher, our defending Richmond winner. He's he's probably gonna show up again. Uh, Chris Buescher, I felt like last year a couple drivers had had a little bit of a breakout season. William Byron, Chris Buescher, Ryan Blaney. Our defending champion, even. 
And I just feel like both of both uh, Rosh Fenway Kozlowski Racing Drivers are going to have pretty good days at Richmond this week. So, as you can tell, three of my picks are Fords this week. I did have one Chevy in there for my main pick. Give me Kyle Larson. Our defending uh, Toyota Owners 400. I think that's the name of this race this weekend. Winner. Our defending spring race winner is actually Kyle Larson. And I feel like he's not going to go anywhere. And Kyle Larson already has a win this year. And I think he wants to join teammate William Byron as being for sure in the playoffs. Because if you did the math, there are 16 guys that will make the playoffs. Mathematically, there are 26 races in the regular season. Mathematically, only 13 can win two each. Anyway, if you have picks for Richmond, let me know. Check flags in the air. Legs up, comment favorite. Be nice, Kobe Awesome. Eric Pate, don't I hate. See you later. <laughs>